Good morning, little masters, and welcome back to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony Podcast. Let's keep week 24 going with today's Third Age Thursday, our time to revisit those familiar and sometimes less than familiar stories of the Third Age. Now, last week, we continued our read-through of the quest of Erebor in Unfinished Tales, seeing just how much of a disappointment Bilbo had really become, and how he almost ruined Gandalf's plans, and frankly would have had the wizard not held on to the map and key given to him in the pits of Dol Guldur. And that's where we'll pick up. But that was not enough for me. I knew in my heart that Bilbo must go with him, or the whole quest would be a failure. Or, as I should say now, the far more important events, by the way, would not come to pass. So I had still to persuade Thorin to take him. There were many difficulties on the road afterwards, but for me this was the most difficult part of the whole affair. Though I argued with him far into the night after Bilbo had retired, it was not finally settled until early the next morning. Thorin was contemptuous and suspicious. He is soft, he snorted, soft as the mud of his shire, and silly. His mother died too soon. You are playing some crooked game of your own, Master Gandalf. I'm sure that you have other purposes than helping me. You are quite right, I said. If I had no other purposes, I should not be helping you at all. Great as your affairs may seem to you, they are only a small strand in the great web. I am concerned with many strands, but that should make my advice more weighty, not less. I spoke at last with great heat. Listen to me, Thorin Oakenshield, I said. If this hobbit goes with you, you will succeed. If not, you will fail. A foresight is on me, and I am warning you. I know your fame, Thorin answered. I hope it is merited. But this foolish business of your hobbit makes me wonder whether it is foresight that is on you, and you are not crazed rather than foreseeing. So many cares may have disordered your wits. They have certainly been enough to do so, I said, and among them I find most exasperating a proud dwarf who seeks advice from me without claim on me that I know of, and then rewards me with insolence. Go your own ways, Thorin Oakenshield, if you will, but if you flout my advice, you will walk to disaster, and you will get neither counsel nor aid from me again until the shadow falls on you, and curb your pride and your greed, or you will fall at the end of whatever path you take, though your hands be full of gold. He blenched a little at that, but his eyes smoldered. Do not threaten me, he said. I will use my own judgment in this matter, as in all that concerns me. Do so then, I said. I can say no more, unless it is this. I do not give my love or trust lightly, Thorin, but I am fond of this hobbit, and wish him well. Treat him well, and you shall have my friendship to the end of your days. I said that without hope of persuading him, but I could have said nothing better. Dwarves understand devotion to friends and gratitude to those who help them. Very well, Thorin said at last, after a silence. He shall set out with my company, if he dares, which I doubt. But if you insist on burdening me with him, you must come too, and look after your darling. Good, I answered, I will come, and stay with you as long as I can, at least until you have discovered his worth. It proved well in the end, but at the time I was troubled— for I had the urgent matter of the White Council on my hands. And so it was that the quest of Erebor set out. I do not suppose that when it started Thorin had any real hope of destroying Smaug. There was no hope. Yet it happened. But alas, Thorin did not live to enjoy his triumph or his treasure. Pride and greed overcame him, in spite of my warning." And here the narrative breaks briefly as Frodo asks a question. You'll remember that at the very beginning, Frodo used I, and then it was almost all Gandalf. But surely, I said, that's Frodo, he might have fallen in battle anyway. There would have been an attack of orcs, however generous Thorin had been with his treasure. That is true, said Gandalf. Poor Thorin, he was a great dwarf of a great house, whatever his faults. And though he fell at the end of the journey— it was largely due to him that the kingdom under the mountain was restored as I desired. But Day in Ironfoot was a worthy successor, and now we hear that he fell, fighting before Erebor again, even while we fought here. I should call it a heavy loss, if it was not a wonder, rather, that in his great age he could still wield his axe as mightily as they say he did, standing over the body of King Brand before the gate of Erebor until the darkness fell. It might all have gone very differently indeed. 
The main attack was diverted southwards, it is true, and yet even so, with his far-stretched right hand, Sauron could have done terrible harm in the north, while we defended Gondor, if King Brand and King Dain had not stood in his path. When you think of the great battle of Pelennor, do not forget the battle of Deo. Think of what might have been. Dragon fire and savage swords in Eriador. There might be no queen in Gondor. We might now only hope to return from the victory here to ruin and ash. But that has been averted, because I met Thorin Oakenshield one evening on the edge of spring, not far from Bree. A chance meeting, as we say in Middle-earth. Now, these last couple of paragraphs are a near-verbatim copy of what we find in the appendices and what I read three weeks ago regarding the death of Day and Ironfoot and the Battle of Dale. But there are still plenty of new bits and extra details in the rest of this passage, starting with the contentious back and forth between Gandalf and Thorin about the involvement of Bilbo in the dwarves' quest. I absolutely love Gandalf's fiery wit here, and I'm also not surprised in the least to see Thorin's stubbornness. But what did surprise me was Gandalf's confession that he was fond of Bilbo. I mean, I know that's true, but it's nice to hear him say it to someone other than Bilbo and to see it be so effective. Well, folks, it's been eight long weeks of Dwarven stories. Maybe I should have said eight short weeks of Dwarven stories. So we might have to move on to something else in Series 4 when we come back on Third Age Thursday in January. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show and get an ad-free feed, a monthly hangout with me, a bonus weekly episode, and a lot more. And join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times as I welcome a very special guest for Fandom Friday. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Please follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Finally, as Faramir says go with the goodwill of all good men.